How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my C++ programming walkthrough here. Today we are looking at an array of class objects. Um, it's kind of like almost the same thing as an array of structs. Um, here we have our clock type class again, which we've been using as a, an example in the past couple of videos. Um, the only thing we've changed is the we've added the constructor with default parameters, which and again, is zero for all three ints, hour, minutes, and seconds. Um, let's take a look at that implementation. Here's the default param or constructor, um, and the constructor with um, default parameters. Again, in this constructor, we're making a function call to set time, which basically just ensures that hours, minutes, and seconds are within the proper bounds. Um, we don't want to have a time that reads, you know, 77. 80, 93, you know. So, and we, we also wrote two functions, one to print the array of the class objects and one to fill the array of class objects. Notice um, I have omitted the initialize, which because th now that we have um, constructors on our side, during our declaration of the array, we um, of type clock type, we call this time in of five objects. When this is declared, the default constructor will initialize each um, each element, each each variable in here to uh, zero. So, if we wanted to um, run this and verify that we we have our, our our array declared, we're making a function call to the print function here. We're going to print time in, and our print basically is this accessing um, each element in the array called in. And the formal parameter. Um, we're going to print it and then notice it's accessing a function call, uh, the print function, to each clock type variable. Each each position in this array is going to have access to all these functions. So again we're going to print it <clears throat> and then the fill basically just gathers our minutes and seconds we have declared as um, integers here and uses those um, integers input to the the in array, which basically is time in, We're making the function call to set time, hours, minutes, and seconds with whatever the user entered. Um, so again, let's go ahead and run this, and you can see printing time, printing all all five positions of our time in array. They're all initialized to zero. Now we're calling the function fill to gather input for all five of the um, employees. So let's just um, 755, 45, 758, 32, let's go 805, <clears throat> 12, um, make this guy really late, 815, 23, and one more just in time, 759, 58. Okay, now once this fill function is finished gathering data for five iterations of the for loop, you can see we are calling the function print time, and during the next five lines of data, employee 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they are initialized to our values that we input 755, 45, 758, 805, 815, and 759. Then we're going to make a direct function call to the position 0, which is the first element in the array um, of time in, and we're going to increment the hours of that position and then print again. <clears throat> and actually, in fact, in, instead of printing everything, why don't we make some function call to the print time in position 0 print. There we go. So again, um, we're going to need to re-input the data. Uh, 5, 45. Make that guy really early. 755. Um, 758. Um, 805. And 815. Now again, 
Okay, our, our values are just as we input. And then after our position zero increment hours, um, that's going to make this 645. And then we're going to make the, the one time print call to that direct element and print 64534. So basically, there you have arrays of class objects, how to access the uh, different objects within functions and in the main function. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, again, here's all our, our clock type functions that did not change, except for the um, constructor with default parameters. Um, so please rate, comment, subscribe. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for my next video.